it's been a while since you and I've had a chance to talk, and it is great seeing you, Matt. First, how has 2023 been so far for you? And also, I'm going to let fans in on a little quick secret before we started. You, I think you were still eating some Easter candy or chocolate. Easter chocolate, yeah. Yes. <laughs> how are things going, Matt? I'm doing well, thanks. I've been uh, been busy. I've been, you know, I haven't been writing a ton because I'm sort of past that phase of my album cycle, more into the deciding part of making a record you know where you're um sort of trying to uh trying to narrow the songs down and pick ones that fit together so um uh while i'm releasing this uh acoustic ep uh coming up i'm also uh working on a studio record too so it's been busy so uh, doing that some travel uh so that's nice nice to get on the road again after so many years of you know i've done a little but it's just it's still the novelty's still there again you know no, it's been a couple of months since you and I have spoken. What was mm-hmm. the last album that we were talking about? Uh, that would have been episode five. That's it. Is, Can yeah. you remind us about that, please? Yeah, that was a record that I did during the pandemic. And I, I had first just released it on Bandcamp along with a companion book and sort of a, you know, That's I right. just wanted to do something different because it was, you know, uh, such a strange time and we weren't touring. So, you know, so do something that would, you know, help make it a little more notable, which which happened. And then... I released it later fully to streaming. So that was a record that I made, uh, a bunch of songs, you know, four of them written with a regular co-writer in Nashville named Stone Eiley, um, and then a couple other co-writers and some solo rights. But I, you know, uh, I recorded most of that just before the pandemic and then kind of finished it during and then put that out. And then, uh, so that's been great. And, um, you know, it's been a an interesting, uh, like most people who released records during that time, it was a bit not what we were used to, but we found our way. and. So then now I've done this, uh, I, the interesting thing that happens with me is that when I, when I do these fully produced songs with bands and, uh, and horn sections and strings and all this stuff, and then you get out on, on the road playing solo sometimes, and you got to recreate these songs. And so I always find that really interesting. It's like relearning my own songs. So in the time of playing shows after episode five, I, I relearned sort of how to present a lot of those songs solo. And that's what ended up. Uh, leading me to end up recording a few of those versions to put out. So that's been interesting. Now, doesn't that show to me how good the music really is? Because I've always said this, when you can do a song acoustic, that shows the power of it. Because it also, it not only just strips down the, the, the music or the song, but it also shows and presents the essence of what the song truly is. Well, I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> that's a difficult uh question to answer without seeming uh if i agree with you i'd sound maybe arrogant but um be no. arrogant man you deserve but, to be arrogant i uh, know nobody deserves to be arrogant confident is another thing um <laughs> yeah you know honestly i like to think that my songs work either way right i like to think that they and if they don't then i feel like i need to go back to the drawing board on them you know what i mean like if they don't feel good either way um you know because because genre and um Genre most of the time is just production, right? Like, like what creates genre is the way that those instruments are used. You know, I heard it described in a podcast a while ago. Like, a guitar doesn't have a genre, right? You know what I mean? Like, uh, it's how I never it's thought used. Of that. You know what I mean? It's an instrument doesn't. Re- I mean, you could say that a steel guitar is country, but I mean, you know, there's uh, Whitney Houston's uh, breakout record has steel guitar, I think, on two tracks, mm-hmm. and as does Elton John, and like all this stuff, right? So, like, you can really. Um, you could argue that many different ways, but yeah, I, I like to think that the song can work anyway. Like this, with this one tune, everything right that was on uh, episode five, I didn't play any guitar on it. I, I tried several different types of guitar, different guitars, electric, acoustic, and none of it, none of it really worked. It just didn't really feel like it needed it. It wanted to be piano driven. And then I got out and I sort of made a new arrangement of it because I'm not a piano player, so to to play live and that's just guitar and voice, right? So you take that same song and present it a different way. And yeah, and if it still feels good and still reaches people and the message is still there, then, you know, you got one. (laughs) Was it difficult to get back on the road after the pandemic? I mean, basically things really have opened up. People are coming out the shows. Mm -hmm. Uh, Was there difficulty for you in getting out there and getting fans and saying, hey, it's okay, you can come out and you know, re-experience what we did before? I mean, I, you know, truthfully and earnest, I haven't totally experienced that yet because I did do some shows um, 
uh, some touring last April, sort of. But the way that my record, my my record, sort of landed, it just like basically like right now, where everything is really opened up again. I'm sort of really, I'm at the end of my last album cycle and ready to do something new, which was sort of part of the reason for doing this acoustic EP that I've done, uh, which sort of happened accidentally, but um, was to jumpstart some, was to sort of maybe re-interest people because all of the songs I do are from episode five, sort of recapture people who might hear the acoustic versions and then go back and listen to the studio. But um, I'm getting away from your question here. Um, I did some shows in... in Philly and New York and Nashville um, last April, about a year ago. And yeah, it was, that was really rated. It was still like, there was still a lot of restrictions and we were concerned about getting back over the border. So we were kind of like masking when we're off stage. And so, yeah, it was, it's all strange, man. But I'm so glad that we're kind of, you know, past that and that we don't have, doesn't have to be the dominant, no pun intended, but the dominant strain of every conversation. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely but, uh, you know absolutely it was, uh, it was that that was a really interesting experience but uh playing uh doing some of those bigger u.s cities and playing i worked with musicians down there so that was really fun but no i'm stoked to to do some traveling coming up and, and push this uh acoustic record and then while i'm doing some of the travel the show in toronto i'm going to be doing a few sessions while i'm in town for the next studio record so yeah trying to it's kind of cool the way it is now you can kind of I mean, you know, there's pros and cons to it, but it's, I like the way that you can, um, you know, kind of keep releasing stuff is, is, you know, keep putting stuff out there in the world all the time, you know, that's fun. So let's talk about the, uh, Toronto show revival is the place to be. Yes. And, uh, we're back with lemon stage, lemon entertainment. This is all part of something that's really cool because it's a show, not just giving out great music and great artists, but it's also a show giving back and awareness too at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. For the Canadian Music Therapy um, are putting it on and it's a fundraiser for them and all the important work they do. So yeah, it's certainly cool to be a part of, uh, be a musician making music for an organization that helps use music to heal people. So, I mean, that's that's the uh, two birds with one stone there, right? You know, so, and it's cool. I've seen lots of shows, you know, and clips from Revival before, but uh, never been there or played there. And so uh, I know it's a cool space. So I'm really looking forward to that. No, you know what? I've, I've, uh, I've been there. It is an amazing uh, space. Great bar scene. Great, great acoustics. Great everything. I get to introduce you, man. I'm back. Oh, up awesome. Hosting. So I am looking forward to that because we had fun in the past. Looking forward to doing this here too. Um, you know, when we're talking about healing, and I'm going to go back during the pandemic, really, to me, and talking to a lot of folks, music was really one of the great healers in getting people through that tough time. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, music and, and is uh, always does that to people. You know what I mean? It's it's what they reach for when they, uh, when you know, really to support any emotion, a happy one, a sad one, anything. But like, there's a, there's a connection to and sharing and sharing music and 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 knowing that you're listening to the same you know that you have similar interests to people it's a great bond and it's a great you know conversation starter for sure no absolutely now you kind of kept mentioning over and over again the acoustic album yes do we have yeah. a name yet do we know when yeah, it's, it's gonna called be live out? and alone it's called live and alone and it's going to be out April 14th fantastic oh man i i just got shivers so this is this is perfect connection Absolutely. on making all this happen here. Yeah, for sure. Like that. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm actually going to be in BC doing a, a showcase at Pacific Contact, um, and then coming to Toronto and doing this, and then I'm doing another show at the Carlton in Halifax on the 23rd. To all, all of them are kind of to celebrate the release of this, which is uh, to, of Live and Alone, which is out on, yeah, April 14th. Which is uh, it's four songs that, like I said, I'm from Episode Five. Um, and sort of how I've, uh, my acoustic versions of them. It's interesting. It, it sort of happened by, almost by accident. Well, almost completely, well, it was by accident. So I went into the studio. Um, I had a bit of uh, bit of credit with a, a videographer friend and a studio friend. And, and so a few hours that I could kill and burn up in there. So I went in planning to just make um, YouTube content um, of, you know, a few acoustic songs. But because it was recorded in a studio so well, and then just the way the takes came out, 
they were all just live singing and playing live, you know, right off the floor, just like I would at a gig. Um, but in a nice studio and it just, it sounded, uh, so great. The engineer did such a great job of capturing it and the, and then we shot video of it all. So not only we decided, you know, we may as well put it out as an EP on all the streaming services. And then we also have like video capture of the entire making of it. So oh, that's that pretty sounds... cool. So yeah. is it on YouTube right now or? No, it isn't yet. No, no, it it isn't. So we're basically going to put the, we've got one song from it. Um, One of the acoustic songs from it is on YouTube. But when we posted it, we didn't sort of know and say that it was from the acoustic ep because we didn't know that we were going to develop it that far but then we decided to so yeah we're going to have a bunch of uh a bunch of shorts of the uh um of the of the performance and and some you know behind the scenes stuff and all that of, of those tunes so so yeah so i'm going to be you know supporting that while i'm in down it's going to be cool Amazing. Look, man, congratulations on the new Thank music you. coming out. Uh cannot wait to introduce you at the show. I remember, like I said, your last performance was amazing. And if I remember correctly, I even think I even called you back out on stage for a standing ovation because it was so <laughs> damn good. Looking forward oh, to all you, of man. it, man. Uh, you're all a right. special artist, and I always enjoy what you do. Thank oh, you for thank this. You, and uh, like you said, man, looking forward to the show. Yeah, we'll see you on the 18th. 